Hedonic Health Podcast. I'm your host, Tommy DeStefano, and this is episode number one. These first few episodes I'm going to be doing solo, but later on I do plan on getting some guests on. This will be sort of an introduction, so it's probably going to be a little shorter than what my typical episodes will be, and this will probably be the least interesting and probably the worst of all the episodes. So if this one bores the hell out of you, I definitely encourage you to wait and check out some other episodes before judging this whole podcast too harshly. I just wanted to lay out a little bit of a trajectory as to where I plan on taking this podcast, give a little bit of my own reasoning for deciding to start a podcast, and provide a little bit of my own background in case I actually get some folks tuning in that don't already know me. So I'll start with what this hedonic health name is all about, since that's likely the first thing you're wondering. I came up with this name when I was thinking of podcast names about a year ago. I wanted to come up with something general enough that I could fit a large variety of topics that I'm interested in, but enough of a cohesive theme that it would still carry a somewhat unified message or purpose. So hedonic are things that are related to pleasure and enjoyment, and health, things that are related to keeping us functioning well for as long as we possibly can. The name promotes this goal of cultivating a lifestyle that balances enjoyment and sustainability. Fun and longevity, indulgence and discipline, things like that. So while this is a health podcast, I'd like to delve into a lot of tangential topics that typically don't fit under the same roof uh, with any of the well-known health and fitness circles out there. The general theme that I'm going for is discussing things that are fun and interesting enough to invoke some enthusiasm, but also serve some function towards bettering ourselves or the world around us. There might be episodes where we discuss typical health and fitness podcast stuff, like the details of nutrition and training and things like that, but I also plan on doing episodes on more tangential topics like capoeira, gardening, music, yoga, etc., things like that. I think people tend to get too caught up in either indulging too much without discipline, which we've all probably done to some extent in our lives, or viewing the pursuit of health as a masochistic endeavor. Like, I have to do this exercise even though I hate it, or I have to force myself to eat these stupid vegetables. If you can change your script to something more like, I'm so grateful I have the opportunity to move my body and develop physical skills, or damn, these veggies are fresh and tasty, then you're probably going to have a lot more fun and get way better results with whatever your goals are. Another reason that I wanted to use the word hedonic in the name is that it's sort of a nod to this concept of the hedonic staircase, or sometimes called the hedonic treadmill. It's an interesting idea that I think can be applied in a lot of different ways to a lot of different things, but the basic idea is that as you get accustomed to any particular thing, you need more and more of that thing in order to get the same effect. So one example would be with food. If that's your primary source of pleasure and you just overindulge and overindulge, you need more and more of it, or you need more potent forms of it, which would mean like typically higher calories, to get the same enjoyment. So you have to either seek out novelty, like new flavor combinations, to sort of climb a different staircase, or develop the discipline to back off every once in a while and not hang out at the top of the staircase, accumulating a bunch of chronic diseases like diabetes and obesity. So that's how I came up with the name. Uh, So now I'll just go ahead and give a little bit of introduction to myself uh, and kind of lead up to how I came up with this idea of starting a podcast. Uh, I usually find the introductions in podcasts to be super boring, like, I don't care what school you went to or whatever, just, you know, I get that you're an expert, let's just hear what you have to say already. But whatever, this is an intro episode that probably nobody will listen to anyways, so I'll just go ahead and throw a few things out there. Um, My name is Tommy DeStefano. I grew up in and still live in Omaha, Nebraska. I am currently 36 years old. Um... My dad was a, uh, he worked at the family tool and manufacturing business, and my mom was a stay-at-home mom. I had two older brothers, and I was just a typical nerdy kid, uh, spent most of my youth geeking out on video games and comic books and movies, and I did play drums. 
Um, I played sports with the neighborhood kids when I was young, but I was always kind of the fat kid and just never felt inclined to pursue actual team sports or anything, so I wasn't really into athleticism or anything like that. Um, but in my teens, I had some positive influences. Uh, my brother got me into hiking and yoga, and my best friend Marco dragged me into capoeira, which, you know, if you aren't familiar with, that's going to be one of the main topics that we talk about in some of the upcoming podcasts. Um, I started warming up to this idea of intentionally trying to include some more adequate nutrition to feel and perform better after I got into this stuff, and that's kind of what led me down this path of getting into health. Um, I went to college at University of Nebraska in Omaha, got my bachelor's in psychology with minors in religion, Native American studies, and anthropology. I was just kind of following my interests and learning whatever seemed interesting for the sake of learning. I never had any career path in mind. Um, and then right after college, I got a job supporting developmentally disabled people in group homes. And I spent 11 years at that job, which was way too long, but it was good experience for developing patients and helping people with behavioral change, uh, qualities that I think helped set me up for a career path in health coaching. It was also convenient in that it allowed me to have a schedule where I could pursue the things I was actually passionate about, like teaching capoeira and playing music and doing yoga and all that fun stuff. Around the age of 30 is when I started geeking out more on nutrition. I think as I got older, I just accumulated more and more time giving thought to how can I keep doing all these things that I enjoy for as long as possible? Like what's my cop way to game gonna look and feel like when I'm 50, 70, 90 years old? How much hiking will I be able to do? And how can I at least lessen the risk of all these chronic diseases that so much of the population ends up getting as they get older? And it's like, even if you aren't into doing a bunch of physical intense activities, what about, you know, folks that are just, you know, getting so out of shape, they can barely do basic things like play with their kids or just get up and down from off of the ground comfortably. So I went down this whole rabbit hole of the paleo and low carb sphere of the health world and really got into this ridiculous bulletproof diet. Funny enough, uh, most of the things I was doing then are totally trendy now with everyone hacking their coffee with MCT oil and going into ketosis and other strange endeavors. But I digress. <laughs> It was at least a starting point, and it helped me develop some good habits like eating more veggies, and uh, you know, it was interacting with those circles online that really got me thinking about supplementing my physical practices with some resistance training and things like that, so it wasn't a total waste. Uh, I, I had eschewed gyms for the longest time because I always had capoeira, yoga, and hiking and things like that, but eventually... I read enough about the health benefits of strength and hypertrophy that I decided to start lifting and have stuck with that ever since. So now I was, you know, geeking out on nutrition and still doing capoeira and added the lifting in and still doing yoga and hiking and drumming. And then my capoeira maestre, uh, Perede, he introduced me to this whole really cool gardening method that got me started on that and also got uh, our whole group dabbling in like primitive skills and you know foraging and making bows and arrows and stuff. When I got into lifting I started going to the YMCA and so after a few years of lifting at the Y uh, and you know I was just learning about nutrition and training during my downtime at my day job anyways and I noticed the trainers at the YMCA more and started thinking that looks like it could be a fun career path. Uh, you know, something I could actually get enthusiastic about. Um, and one of the guys there, he had long hair and toe shoes like myself. Shout out to Dan. And I'd had some good conversations with him in the past, so I chatted him up about his job. And he referred me to his boss. Uh, shout out to John. And he referred me to a good training certification. So I got my personal training certification from the National Council on Strength and Fitness. And then I went on and also got a certified certification uh, as a health coach from ACE. And then I quit my previous job and started working at the Y. 
And so I've been there for a little over a year now until the whole COVID-19 thing hit. And, you know, now I've been home for a little over a month. And I had also just gotten another certification from Precision Nutrition, and their specialty is online coaching. So during this time off, I had decided to add that to my repertoire and started this online health coaching business. And now this podcast. So my reasoning for starting a podcast, you know, it's like there's so many health podcasts already, tons and tons, and I bet there's millions more now that COVID-19 has hit. But, you know, I've been listening to podcasts daily since back in those bulletproof days, you know, probably like 2013. And so I've thought, often thought about what sort of podcast I could put together with my eclectic background. You know, I've got a variety of goals that I want to accomplish with this podcast. Um, and the first thing I want to do is at least be informative. Nothing too exciting there, but I'm sure each episode will have at least something you didn't know already even if it's just some boring bio highlights of my own life. Um, but the second thing is to make this thing interesting and entertaining, um, or at least thought-provoking. So hopefully the educational aspect doesn't bore the shit out of you. The third thing I want to do is make it practical or motivating so that you can actually apply some of these practices and ideas to your own life, or at least ramp up your enthusiasm about the things that you're already doing. I also have some loftier, altruistic ideas of why I wanted to do this podcast. The first one is community building. While these first few episodes will be monologues, I do intend to do some interviews soon. I'd like this to serve as a platform for people to share their own health building, happiness enhancing activities, crafts, interests, etc., all under this hedonic health umbrella. I know quite a few folks locally and nationally that have some awesome knowledge bases that I think the world could benefit from being exposed to. So if I can create any amount of audience for them, I think that'd be great. Which leads me to the next thing, hopefully just being exposed to these kinds of ideas and practices regularly will help nudge people in the direction of becoming happier and healthier in their own lives. And that leads me to the third thing on this list of altruistic reasons why I want to do the podcast which is that I just think that healthier and happier people make everything in the world run a little better. So hopefully this podcast can tr contribute to that. Of course, I have also got a few selfish reasons for wanting to start a podcast. The main one being that I just want to promote things I like, because if more people get into them, they become more accessible for everyone, including myself. And some things just benefit from having more people participate, like capoeira. For another reason I wanted to do this is it's just a fun experiment. It's an interesting way for me to reflect and coalesce my ideas and take on the challenge of putting them out there and experiment with the whole recording myself doing monologues thing, which is kind of awkward. And lastly, I also did just start this online coaching business, so I need a little bit of exposure. Uh, really though, I think online coaching is a service that a lot of people could really benefit from anytime but especially now, since the current crisis is one where like being healthier puts you at an even more of an advantage than ever before, and since everyone's routines are thrown off, it can help to have some structure for maintaining some good habits. After working at the Y for the past year, I can really see how for like nutrition coaching especially, the online thing has some major advantages. Like meeting in person is definitely my preference for training people. But most people's goals are actually more influenced by their nutrition and lifestyle the other 23 hours of a day that they aren't in the gym. So being able to connect remotely at your own convenience is a huge game changer for actually making some sustainable changes that will get you to your goals. Plus, Precision Nutrition's curriculum and app that I use are super sleek and they're based on evidence and thousands of co clients and coaches that they've worked with over ton, you know, over a long period of time. So it's a great platform for me to conveniently interact with clients. So that's who I am and why I started this podcast and kind of where I see this podcast going. Um, before wrapping up here, I'd like to let you all know about a few places you can connect with me and help build this community. The one-stop place that you can find everything is at www.hedonichealth.com. And from there, you can find a link to my Facebook group, 
which is a group that's open to the public for anyone to ask questions or share anything related to fun, healthy endeavors or just funny memes or whatever. Um, I also started posting pictures and video clips on Instagram. If you want to see what sort of stuff I'm up to, like my training and what kind of boring food I'm eating and things like that. If you're the kind of generous and financially comfortable person that likes to donate to young idealists like myself and promote awesome causes, there's a link there to my Patreon account. And I'm just starting this thing from the ground up, recording on my iPad and just starting this business thing. So any amount that you could donate would go towards helping build this business and this podcast and everything. I don't have any special goodies to hand out or anything like that yet. But at the very least, I'll give you a shout out. Um, and then so lastly, if you have any questions, concerns, comments, or criticism, suggestions for guests, or anything like that, you can email me at hedonichealth at gmail.com. Um, and if I collect enough interesting questions, I may, you know, do an occasional Q&A episode or, you know, things like that. So that wraps it up. If you've listened this far, thanks a bunch to you. I do appreciate it and promise that the following episodes will be more interesting. Stay tuned as the next one, the first real episode, will be about capoeira, which is some of the most awesome shit in the entire world that you'll ever hear about. Ciao!